Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial. This time it's all about rendering loops from Reactor's group boxes. And I know that sounds like something we've done before, but this is in fact a little bit different because what we're talking about is extracting individual parts from the grooves and rendering those as loops. This gives us enormous versatility. And it does something else, which is great. It allows us to really focus on making grooves and making music rather than getting caught up with basically the infinity of features that we have at our disposal when using these group boxes in Reactor. That can sometimes kind of squelch our creativity when, when we're thinking, oh geez, what else could I tweak? What else could I do to this sound? Uh, we can get lost in that in that kind of loop of changing and tweaking and, and fiddling with the knobs. So we're going to get away from that and get really focused on creating grooves and uh, creating music. So that's what we're up to in this video. Uh, the first ensemble that we're going to use is aerobic, and then we're going to move on to uh, sign beats. And I'm going to show you in both cases how to route these sounds into Ableton Live and to record them and to add some kind of additional tweaks. So let's get going. So let's start in using aerobic, which is one of Reactor's groove boxes, and it's a drum synth, meaning that it synthesizes its sounds. It doesn't use one-shot samples. As a result, we get a very pure kind of synthetic sound. It goes like this. So some nice pure penetrating tones here. Now what we'd like to do is break out these individual parts and render them all to loops. So for that task, we are going to activate this out section or this out toggle in the master section at lower right. What this, what this does is it switches aerobic from sending everything out on stereo outs one and two to dividing up the individual parts. And you hear that as I've done that, this meter, or you see that as I've done that, this meter begins to register the individual parts going out on separate channels. Now what I'm going to do is select a different snapshot that I like for this purpose. It is snapshot 56 called Disco Compact. And you see that now we have all of these all of these meters are active indicating that sounds are going out on each of our four stereo outs. But we're only hearing one of them. We're only hearing that kick drum. And the reason why is that we haven't configured Ableton Live, which is the host I'm using, to accept the audio from these different channels. So that's what we're going to do now. Now I'm going to go into live and I am just going to do control T uh, to create new audio tracks. I'm going to, going to do this four times. And then I am going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on the first track that I've created and in audio from I will select uh, reactor 5 and that will make reactor, reactor the uh, source for all of these tracks. And then I'm going to set the monitors to in for all of these. And then I will uh, deselect that group and come back and begin to set each of these for the individual channels. Now one of these we just want to have on, let's say, uh, either pre or post effects, which will give us our kick drum sound, which will go out on stereo outs one and two. The others we want to select uh, reactor two, reactor three, and reactor four respectively, and that will give us the other three stereo outs. So now, if we have done this correctly, we should see these meters light up as we get the transport going. And there we have it. Now I can even turn off my individual reactor track because now it's sending all its audio to these different tracks. And I can solo these. There's our kick. There's kind of that bleepy snare drum. There's our hat sound. And there is our very nice bass line. Now a good way to record these into separate loops is to go over to our arrangement view and to simply highlight all of these and arm them for recording and then what I like to do is to use these uh, this punch functionality and just have it record a predetermined length in this case it will start at, uh, at the very beginning and it will record four bars and if I arm my master transport for recording and then I get this going we should see all of these different tracks recording audio so here we go So there it goes, and you see after it got through four bars, it just stopped recording. And now what I can do is click on these, highlight or hold down shift, so I highlight all of them, and I'm just going to click, and it kind of keeps creating sound there, I'm not sure why, but we will go back and drop these into our audio tracks in the session view. Now this is just a personal preference, this is how I like to work, you may want to do it differently. Uh, do, it, do it whatever way works best for you. And now I am going to, I guess, select all of these 
and set them to auto because now we don't want the monitor set to in we want we want to just be hearing what these individual loops are and if we go to them we see that here we have our kick drum it's perfectly chopped we have here this snare drum uh, the hat sound and of course our bass line so now we can select all of these and set them to loop if we want all of them to loop and then we can get them going so there we have our individual tracks and in fact, now we're really hearing the individual loops because before we were just hearing Reactor. In fact, I could go into Reactor and turn this off if I wanted to save CPU cycles. And now we can just go nuts with this. Now, something that's interesting to do here is uh, move these, move the start positions around, of course, which you could do, say, with a kick drum if you wanted to. Pretty obvious thing to do. But we could also say come over to this bass line, which we have here. We could filter that if we wanted to. But another cool thing to do uh, that I've experimented with is using fast effects on this bass line. Uh, we can come in here, we load our Reactor 5 FX, and we just load it onto the track that has our bass line. And uh, we can go to Electronic Instruments Volume 2, Fast Effects 1.3 get this going. Uh, we want to select ins one and two so that we're accepting the audio from the baseline track. And then we can freeze it. Get some kind of penetrating techno action there. Or use the slice manipulator. Kind of like that. And I might also want to uh, say bring an auto filter in here be nice to do. Bring that into our audio, the uh, baseline track. So some very nice stuff going on there. Uh, that's of course going to continue to repeat that as long as I have fast effects going. Now that is how to do it in aerobic. Uh, pretty straightforward. The next section we are going to take a look at doing this in sign beats, which again is another drum synth very cool to work with, a slightly different workflow, but this is going to give you the same result. Now let's take a look at doing the same thing with our good friend Signbeats, which of course is another drum synth in the Reactor Factory library. This one is perhaps even more out there than aerobic, if such a thing is possible. Uh, creates a lot of ambient techno, kind of dub techno type vibes. Sounds like this. So almost an old school Autechre type flavor there. Very cool stuff. We're going to do this basically the same way. Now I've set up my, my tracks in Ableton Live uh, basically the exact same way as we did it for the aerobic section. But now in Signbeats we need to make a few tweaks and uh, the first of these is to go to the mixer section and make sure that we're set up to send these separate sound sources out on separate tracks. Uh, I can do that by simply clicking on the channel number and you see that for sine wave one it's now sent, being sent out on three and four. Uh, out uh, 5 and 6 for sine wave 2 and uh, 7 and 8 for sine wave 3. Just keep clicking until you get to the channel you want. And then we're only hearing the noise generator as one would expect. Now, there are a couple things that you need to do here to get this to work. If use single out is not selected, you need to have this set. But what you saw there is that it started sending single outs. It start, started sending the tracks out on separate channels. But then it just stops. And the reason why that is is because the snapshot uh, instrument is active. We need to power that off because that will meddle with our, uh, with our quest to send these out on separate channels and uh, it will keep you from doing that. So turn that off. Make sure use single out is selected. Now uh, you may need to toggle use single out to get that to come back on. And now we see the meters registering it. And if we go to our uh, live set, we see that it is in fact registering these on the individual tracks. And one of the things that's nice about this is that these are extraordinarily complex sounds on their own. So you may choose to just have them work in a more spare kind of arrangement because you, you get more of the complexity of the sound coming through. So very cool stuff. And then of course the recording process would be the exact same as it was for aerobic. So in this video, I've showed you how to extract uh, separate parts from the grooves of aerobic 
and sign beats and to render those as individual loops. Now, what you do from here is, of course, up to your own sense of adventure and discretion and uh, wildness, as the case may be. Uh, but I hope that you found this enjoyable and enlightening. It's a great way to work with some of Reactor's hidden gems because, uh, you know, as I mentioned at the outset of the video, sometimes it's the complexity that gets you. If they're too complex, you can find yourself running in circles and not really enjoying the creative process as much as you should. It's good sometimes just to get things going and get these working by closing down some of your options at the outset. Now, if you'd like to learn how to do this same thing in Massive, which is the enormously popular uh, drum sampler, not the synth, but the uh, reactor sampler, head over to Blue Water VST. I posted a bonus video on uh, doing this in Massive for you, how to build a sampler in reactor people. And again, that's a free course for anyone who's interested. But just come by Blue Water VST and visit us. It's a good community. It's a very chill place to learn about reactor. Very nice people. Uh, no one's going to shoot you down. No stupid questions. So hope to see you around there, and I hope, you, hope you've enjoyed this. Take care, guys. Talk to you again soon.